Hello everyone, this is Adnan with another video on AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Training. And uh, so this uh, special video is in regards to the project that we do uh, at the end of the training. So uh, this project is actually two phase uh, project and uh, this is the advanced level. Uh, you need to uh, complete as a student, if you have completed all of the previous videos, you've taken the class training, you should be able to do this. Uh, but before this, you should be able to do uh, the, the first part of the project. The first part of the project was a simple uh, project uh, where a user connect from uh, the internet and cloud and connects to this uh, VPC so there are three different VPCs where you need to connect to uh, so this uh, VPC uh, which is uh, so you just need to work in one region which is North Virginia region or whatever region you're working in uh, so this VPC is connected to this uh, VPC internet hub and within this VPC there is one subnet with two batch and hosts one is Linux the other one is Windows and uh, and then there are two other VPCs this VPC has three subnets and the IP address for the subnets are right here. Uh, there are these Windows machine, the, the ones with the win is known as Windows machines and this is Linux machines. Uh, NXT is the company, Nextware Technology is the company, this is uh, Windows machine, this is LIX, Linux machine. So you need to create these four machines in three subnets and in the third subnet, in the third VPC basically you need to create three subnets and in this subnet there is one Windows machine and one RDS database with the uh, Microsoft SQL and here uh, we have DynamoDB in this subnet and on the third subnet we need to just need to create one Windows uh, VM with Aurora uh, DB uh, so all you need to do once you set up this infrastructure all you need to do is create peering between the VPCs so peering number one between uh, this VPC and this VPC and then VPC and this VPC and the third peering will be this once you do all this uh, also make sure that these are all the these all VPCs these all EC2 instances doesn't have any public IP addresses so these are all private IP addresses uh, the the way you need to connect the way you need to set up is that when you create these two uh, EC2 instances make sure uh, that you have public uh, you, you you have public access enabled while while you are creating this uh, EC2 instances and how do you make sure when you create a EC2 instance on the second screen it asks for uh, where it asks for different configuration and you can uh, have a bootstrap script uh, there you need to select that option of enable public access so on these two you need to have public IP addresses whereas these VMs you don't need to have public IP addresses so the idea once everything is set up uh, the way we can test it you can connect to one of these instances and from within one of these instances you should be RDP into Windows instances and you should be able to SSH into a Linux instance so these are so from here you need to connect to this instance through SSH and that will be the end of this lab so this was the first lab uh, where you need to connect to then the second lab was uh, to uh, have within the same infrastructure you just need to add uh, these buckets so these buckets will be added uh, so same infrastructure same uh, v VMs EC2 instances here you have same uh, VPC uh, you're connected through uh, a peering uh, VPC pairing all you need to do is create one two three four five buckets and in this bucket you need to do uh, this bucket is public access uh, so you just need to create uh, this uh, bucket uh, and uh, and this is for versioning exercise and uh, there is a project document that I uh, I will be uh, sharing with this video as well so you can follow the document and so this is versioning exercise this is policy exercise and this is replication and all the video labs are attached so the videos that I have uh, which is which will be added in the link uh, you, you can use your you can use those videos to basically revise uh, what you have learned when uh, how to do versioning how to do a policy how to apply a policy on the bucket and then complete this exercise uh, there is another bucket that is sitting in Ohio region that will be used for uh, replication if you are able to complete these two labs then you can uh, continue with the third lab this is advanced level lab and for this lab to do you you must be able to complete the other two labs 
so in this lab uh, what you what you need to do there are three uh, three uh, uh, VPCs so, so three networks essentially network number one network number two network number two three this is management hub network this is app one spoke network this is app two spoke network and here you can see these blue lines are subnets uh, so these are different subnets within uh, within VPC so here you have subnet number one subnet number two subnet number three and in the subnet there are two EC2 instances in this but they are in the same subnet they are in the same 11.0.2.0 subnet but they are in two different availability zones so when you create them make sure that they are sitting this is in 1b this is in 1d and this one is 1a this is 1c uh, so 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 uh, first of all three VPCs create three VPCs then create these subnets inside these VPCs uh, so uh, so subnet number one is 11.0.0.24 this is 1.0.24 this is 2.0/24 and this complete range of this VPC is 11.0.0.0 16 uh, so you need to put that in here and uh, so basically I will put that here as well so this subnet is uh, 0, 0.0 slash 16 the address space for this VPC is 16 uh, the address space for this is 12.0.0 now you need to have a good understanding of networking uh, uh, in in AWS uh, in order to have a very good understanding of AWS networking I would uh, suggest that you go through class videos one more time and uh, so if you have an issue if you have a question just let me know in the in the chat window let me know in the chat window so I'm just copying this here so that it is easier to understand that what is the address space of this VPC. So this VPC is 11.16. Okay, so uh, three different VPCs here uh, and uh, these are subnets. So the way you should start this exercise, this lab is uh, clean all your your existing lab and then start with creating three VPCs VPC number one and make sure that names are exactly the same the VPC name secondly create subnet so create a subnet in this VPC create one two and three subnets uh, so subnet number one subnet number two subnet number three and uh, so once you create these subnets uh, then create two uh, two more subnets in this VPC 10.0.0.16 and then create two more subnets in this VPC so these are so first of all create VPC then create subnets and once you do that then create EC2 instances so first of all create this EC2 instance as a Linux instance and make sure it is sitting in this VPC and uh, and I in this subnet in this subnet and a public access is enabled uh, same goes for this is Windows uh, Windows EC2 instance it in this VPC and in this uh, subnet uh, in this subnet and it is public access is enabled then what you need to do create a third EC2 instance this is known as pub private subnet so this EC2 instance uh, when you create it is a Windows instance it is just name it jump host and uh, it is in this subnet and this VPC but do not enable public access when I say do not enable public access when you're creating this instance make sure that uh, it is not enabled for public IP address so this is not enabled for public IP address so idea is that you will connect from here uh, to uh, to this uh, uh, to to this Windows instance. From here, you will cr you will connect to inside this instance, and then connect to all your other infrastructure. So this is your jump host. Uh, for uh, you won't be uh, you won't you will I mean no need to connect from Linux instance. So this is mostly focus on Windows Server. So 
uh, so for that reason I haven't added any Linux there is one Linux instance but uh, just create it for the sake of the lab but mostly you will be using Windows Server in this also when you created a VPC create an internet gateway that is connected to this VPC the first management VPC and uh, attach it to this management VPC and also uh, uh, also uh, use, set up the route table for this uh, VPC as well now when you uh, start creating this infrastructure uh, so you created three or uh, three of these instances then you can uh, before creating anything else create peering between VPCs. so first create VPCs number one then create subnets and also create uh, peering between uh, the VPC so first peering will be peering number one uh, will be so create pre create a peering between uh, this VPC and this VPC and then create a peering between this VPC and this VPC uh, so there will be two of these peering uh, two of these peering that will connect all three so uh, so there will be basically a peering between this VPC and this VPC and this VPC uh, and this VPC and also one peering between this VPC and this VPC so there will be three different peering that you need to connect uh, when you're connecting uh, this entire network uh, so uh, so you created VPC you created subnet now you need to create uh, you do need to create uh, you do need to create uh, you yeah, so so uh, peering is done uh, and you are already created these EC2 instances then you can create a ELB so elastic load balancer watch the video uh, uh, in the so in the class lab we have a video I showed you how to create a e e ELB inst uh, elastic load balancer Elast elastic load balancer are basically of three types application load balancer TCP based load balancer and simple load balancer so these two load balancers are TCP based load balancer and uh, the uh, what you the health check needs to be done on port 80 and with this this is a public load balancer so when you create a load balancer it will ask you is it internal or external or it will ask you public or private so you can select public or external load balancer and in 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 with this load balancer attached to EC2 instances uh, these two EC2 instance make sure that once you create this Windows instance uh, these instances uh, does not have public IP address so these does not have public IP address when you're creating this instance name it with this make sure it is in this VPC make sure it is in this uh, subnet and also make sure that it is in this uh, availability zone same goes for this uh, so uh, this uh, Windows this is Windows 2016 instance in this VPC in this subnet in this availability zone this availability zone is different from this availability zone and install IES on both EC2 instances uh, guys how do you install uh, IES on EC2 instance you just need to go to server manager within uh, Windows server and uh, and add roles and features and within role add a role of web server or IES server if uh, if you're not able to find that just uh, uh, quickly Google install IES on server 2016 so you will get hundreds the videos there and at this stage of training where you're doing an advanced lab you should be able to find out how to install IAS on this and uh, so <coughs> so this and then uh, so once this is made and this is working so you should be able to connect to this public IP address uh, public IP address right here and since it has a public IP address from your machine sitting at home uh, which is uh, your laptop when you connect to this public IP address it should be able to connect to one of these uh, e uh, IES servers so then you will start creating uh, this uh, ELB so this is ELB for internal load balancer this does not have a public IP address but the way you will first create a ELB attach it to these two instances uh, to both of them IES Windows Server make sure that they are in their own availability zone uh, please note that this this is in 1B availability zone this is in 1D this is in 1A this is in 1C so these all ES, EC2 instances are sitting in different availability zone and the way you can test it you can connect it to one of the uh, EC2 instance from here and use a private IP address so this ELB has a private IP address and you can just go to Internet Explorer on this and then use this IP address so you should be able to connect to these if peering provided peering is properly done because this is a VPC two different network you need to have peering in between uh, before even connecting you can ping this so ping uh, from here from this Windows instance to this Windows instance if it is pinging 
then you should be able to connect to ELB. This second, uh, this second subnet in this VPC is just a Windows server and Linux server. I was planning to add Active Directory in this, but, uh, but for now, no need for Active Directory. If you know how to install Active Directory, just create a Windows instance and create your own Active Directory. But at this point, just make a simple Windows instance, simple Linux instance. And uh, in the third VPC, you need to have two subnets. One subnet is simple load balancer and Windows instance. And uh, here, right here, you can do uh, in the third uh, a, a subnet, you need to have, uh, this is Elastic Beanstalk. In Elastic Beanstalk, you can create uh, a, a .NET app. So you can create a .NET app and then create a Windows instance with Visual Studio and Visual Studio from Visual Studio connect to this .NET app. So guys, this is about uh, creating. Uh, this is about creating this lab. Uh, the, I mean, this is uh, some information about this lab. I hope you will be able to complete all the three labs and. Uh, uh, you can if you have any questions you can uh, you can let me know uh, ask the questions within the uh, class group or you can leave a question within the comments area uh, so good luck with, with this lab and I will see you in another video